All right. Gonna have some fun here. Excited to have a conversation with Michael Ratner, Haley Bieber, and we're gonna take the time to talk about the intersection of content and commerce. And frankly, it's something that a lot of founders and a lot of companies just screw up. And I've gotten to know what these amazing individuals have done with their content platform and the beauty brand Road. And it is quite spectacular to the point where I feel like this is gonna be a masterclass for people here around how to do it well. So I just wanna kinda jump in. Michael has started a platform, OBB Media, and has been excellent at working with A-list talent in developing series like Kevin Hart's Cold as Balls and Justin Bieber's Seasons, which was award-winning. And I'd just love for you to tell the audience here like your differentiated approach towards how you've approached media in general. No pressure, master. <laughs> um, well, I think that we, I've paid a lot of attention, we've paid a lot of attention to the state of the world. And I think that the opportunities to distribute and reach an audience have vastly changed. And I think it would be a mistake not to pay attention to that and to meet the audience where they are. And whether it's on a little cell phone or on a tablet or on a TV, yep. um, good storytelling is good storytelling. Yep. And going about storytelling and content, the platform, Haley, you started a series with Michael, mm -hmm. where you've invited people into your bathroom. And like literally, I think like the first like episodes like, were literally in your bathroom. So like, yeah. how did that go? Why did you decide to even do that? Tell us more. Um, well, I decided to start the show. Basically, you know, we were all kind of just chatting even before we came out here. And like you mentioned before, Michael worked on seasons with my husband and I was a part of that. And I felt like Seasons being on YouTube really allowed me to kind of see what the feedback would be on a platform like that. And it really um, made me want to do my own thing within that platform. And I had always had this idea of doing kind of just this quirky, really loose, interesting show that was based in the bathroom because in, in my experience, I've had so many amazing conversations in the bathroom and you know you're at a night out and you're in the bathroom reapplying your makeup and you're having a like you're holding your drinks in the bathroom and you meet interesting people and you have great conversations and I just felt like the idea of that was so interesting to me and, and another point I've always made about why I chose for it to be the bathroom was because you know you go to the Met Gala right and like the most interesting conversations at the Met Gala are like in the bathroom and the craziest pictures come out from the bathroom. Yeah. So I was just thinking of this idea and I was like, how can we do something where we have guests come in the bathroom and we just have a lot of fun and we play games and we eat food and we just do like the most quirky, absurd things that you wouldn't think would take place in such a place as the bathroom. Yeah. And kind of just turn it into this show, and that's how the idea was born. What are some other more absurd things you've done that you can share? <laughs> so I mean, we cooked mac and cheese in the bathroom, and when we started the show as well, like it really was in my bathroom yeah. where I was living, like in the home I was living in, and you know, we started this you know, during the pandemic, and I felt like I had so many fun, cool, interesting friends and people that I've met along the way that would be so great to be guests on the show, and I feel like we've just continued to um, have great moments on the show when we play really interesting games and take tequila shots. I mean, like nothing is off limits yeah. in the bathroom. So. <laughs> and how was it like producing that content? Like going in and be like, oh, I'm in like Haley Bieber's bathroom, and, like filming content. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's a great show because it allows sort of hilarity to ensue, you know, and she's so fun and she's able to go. A lot of times it's people she has a relationship with, yep. but the chemistry always is what allows it just to be wild and quirky, like she said. <laughs> um, there was definitely a point when I looked to her and I was like, I'm sorry, you know, because when you're trying to make a show look good, you've got your grip and your gaffer and the AC and the cam op. And I was like in her and Justin's bedroom and there's like, boom boxes on the ground. I was just like, I think we have outgrown this. Um, it was, I mean, really in the, it was, it was in their house and I just, you know, so then we built a set and, um, I think what we think is so, God bless you. I think what's so, uh, um, interesting about that show and the reason it really works so well 
is there's no rules, right? We go and we shoot. I rarely interject. And they know the game they're going to play, and they the food always is like an homage to where a person's from. So you can start to get conversation about who the person is. Yep. And I think that you, you know, in, 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 any, in any episode, there should be something that's like super fun and makes you laugh. There's something that, you, didn't, you know, interesting. Yep. Um, and uh, I really think that that show is symbolic of kind of like a new TV win, yeah. right? It's like 13, episode, uh, 13 minutes and it's got brand sponsors and it's just a unique way of doing things and it's free and it's available on YouTube. So it's a blast. I think we always have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very fun, you know, make a show in a bathroom as one yeah. does. Well, so talk a little bit about no rules and being on YouTube because this IP, I'm sure if you went to some of the major streaming platforms, you could have cashed in straight out of the gate and been attractive. So why did you choose to go on YouTube for this? Yeah, we had a conversation about that. After we, lo- we wanted the f- creative freedom to do whatever the hell we wanted. Uh, you know, it was a very fun, quirky idea. Do I think if we took it out based on a concept that a streamer was going to say, yeah, we'll buy the bathroom show? Maybe. You know, I don't know. People buy some wild stuff. Um, but I think showing how fun it could be, and then you saw the millions and millions of views that we were getting, we had interest, but we loved the creative freedom mm-hmm. to have on the people we wanted, yeah. to, you know, own the IP and have that underlying value as we, you know, we look at it as a business too. And how can we create engaging content where we can make the best stuff? And then also be able to look to brand sponsorships and other opportunities as an opportunity to monetize. And YouTube's a great home because most importantly, above all else, we're able to connect with Haley's audience. Yeah. And we're able to, to, to distribute it and reach it through her social platforms and her subscribers on YouTube. And it cut out that quote unquote middleman. Yeah. And there's shows that you know are great and should be on a network and we do a lot of those. And I think this one just felt most free flowing, you know, yeah. to really do that. Yeah, I also feel like The reason why I felt like it made the most sense was just because, like Michael said, there's just a lot of freedom there, and YouTube has been a really supportive and just really, really, really great partner since we started with them, and I like to be able to just speak directly to people. At the end of the day, my reason for doing this is to be able to connect with an audience and connect with people and let people get to know me, and I I remember going to Michael and being like, you know, I feel like people got to see a bit of me in seasons, and... I think I'm kind of ready to open up a bit more on to a more broad audience and I I find that to be, you know, it can be a scary thing sometimes to open yourself up and let people in and get to know you and be more vulnerable and um I just felt like there was also like a safety in YouTube because you see, you know, people who have also done this before I ever stepped into that world. You look at Emma Chamberlain and the way she's connected with her audience and you know, I just I had a lot of confidence in the space that YouTube is and has continued to be for so many people before me. And um, I'm so grateful that we did that because I really do feel like it's allowed me to connect on a deeper level with people. And I think that's amazing, especially for the audience you're targeting with Gen Z, which mm-hmm. they want to be seen. They they want that connection. They yeah. don't want to feel like it's just this broadcast channel where someone's blasting information on me, but they want to feel like I'm actually going on this journey with this individual. And it feels like you're able to create almost like this two-way conversation where yeah. they are giving you feedback and you allow them to be heard. And by allowing them to be heard, it allows you to iterate on that content in a way where you give them more of what they want. Yeah. So I'd love to hear both on the content production side of things, and then I love a transition to the actual product that you're selling or leveraging the platform to sell through. Like, how does that feedback loop help you with regards to content production? Well, most recently, I mean, we really listen to the audience and we ask questions and Haley will engage directly. So a great example is we just spun off and started a show, uh, What's in My Kitchen? and entered the kitchen space doing fun cooking. I mean, Haley's always like uh, messing around in the kitchen and creating great stuff, and it's delicious. I actually try it after each episode. It's really good stuff, (laughs) and it's just fun. And uh, she posts after each one, what do people want to see me make? And people will submit their answers, and sure enough, we take that, and then we base our next episodes based on that feedback. And I feel like that's a really special thing where there's this instantaneous loop where somebody could say, you know, I want you to make Panju Keju. And we say, cool, that's really <laughs> real, real example. Love That'd be really random. Um, but did I nail it? Ish. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> uh, 
but you know that's really cool where we could go and take a shot in the dark and yeah. you know in the traditional sense you would go and you'd put something on a network and you see if the audience likes it yeah here we're able to actually talk to people and say well you know fifty thousand people want that specifically we should give it to them yeah now i want to transition to commerce mm -hmm. and so you decided to create road which you're a founding partner and you decided to work with michael and obb as a content partner in creating that. So like, why did you decide it made sense to actually partner with a, a content production company to build a brand? I decided to do that because, I mean, first and foremost, I, I've seen what, I call him Raddy, so I keep wanting to say Raddy, but Michael um, had built with OBB and you know, I didn't really want to go the traditional route of building a brand or just going to an incubator or someone who, you know, does this like clockwork essentially yeah. because I really um, have a very, very specific vision for the brand and I did since the beginning. So I went to Michael and I was like, you know, I have all these ideas and I do think all of these ideas kind of create one big world. To me, road is a whole world. It's the world of road. It's the world of me, essentially. So how can we take all of these different things and put them into one sphere? So road is, you know, my brand baby that I am obsessed with yeah. and love doing. I'm obsessed with skincare. I really wanted to go into that space. I wanted to create this edited, curated line of essentials. And what we always say at Row is creating one of everything good so that you there's no need to have um, an overwhelming amount of skincare or beauty or makeup or anything like that. So I felt like in order for people to really understand my vision for the brand, they were going to have to understand my philosophy on beauty and style and really just get to know me and yep. get to know, you know, how I operate in that space. And, um, I will say too, like there's such a solid, solid beauty community on YouTube and a yep. really solid beauty community on TikTok that I felt like really embraced me in a way that I, you know, am, I feel so lucky to be a part of that, you yep. know, beauty community because it is so um, vast and it's so, at times it can feel like maybe it's overcrowded a little bit in the beauty space. So um, I really just wanted to, create a space where people could know, all right, this is what she's about, this is her philosophy and beauty, and, you know, I identify with that, I, you know, feel like I, you know, yeah. can see myself kind of in that same space, and I wanted to feel like a space where everybody's welcome, everybody can be a part of it, everybody is just part of the world of road, and I felt like we took the time to kind of just develop and figure out what that looked like in terms of having a brand and having to this content space and then really just meshing it into one. And yeah. I do feel like nowadays you can't really have a brand that exists in the beauty space without having the content side of things. I mean, there really is just a world where that doesn't really exist now given how TikTok has become such yeah. a thing and how YouTube has changed so many brands and has changed the beauty industry yeah. so much. So I really just felt like we found our way to, you know, speak to that audience. And it didn't intimidate you or discourage you the fact that there's so many other beauty brands, so many other influencer driven beauty brands. I mean, so much of the companies that may be in this room or companies we back, like mm -hmm. there's always like entrenched incumbents and there's like a mindset around like even though there's an existing player I could do something better so could you talk about just like despite the fact that there's other beauty brands like you you felt like you had something different and you just mm -hmm. attacked it and it sounds like it's doing incredibly well yeah um I just really believed that we were bringing something different that I was bringing something different you know I come from the world of modeling before I decided to start this venture and I really wanted to bring a space of, you know, the world of editorial from the modeling side of things. I wanted there to be a brand that I felt like was aesthetically pleasing, that felt cool and different, but then the products were going to be really, really good and it wasn't going to overwhelm anybody and we weren't going to overwhelm the market with too many products or overconsumption of anything. And I, I do feel like the beauty industry is always going to be a space that's going to feel really you know, at times cluttered, but I do think that every 
person in that industry and every brand, we can all kind of look to each other and learn from each other as well. And I think that it's one big network of support, or it can be, and I think that's just something that you can choose to, you know, acknowledge that and support each other, and everyone can help each other in this industry, to be honest. That's good. And then, Michael, talk to us a little bit about the pitfalls that lots of companies go into when they try to integrate content and commerce, because honestly, most folks just totally screw it up, and you guys sound like you figured out a winning formula. So could you say, like, what's worked well and what are the pitfalls that people try to avoid? The content needs to stand on its own two feet. So the show needs to be engaging, you know, and if there's a way to make the content work or seamlessly integrate it, that's great. And you can try to do that, but it needs to be authentic. And long before there was ever a road product and despite the fact that they totally informed one another, I think it was just so synergistic, we were working on stuff for YouTube, get ready with me, uh, nighttime routines, morning routines, and it was about the content. It wasn't about selling product. You know, it was the last thing on our, it really was the last thing on our mind. It was about seeing what she actually does because she loved that community and was a part of that community and hearing what that community wanted, which was so natural to then lead us to, well, you know, maybe we do a lip product and maybe it was, a, it was an instantaneous feedback loop, yep. which was pretty special. And then at, at the right time, people wanted to see certain things from her because they saw that's what she actually used and they wanted certain products from her. And then it was very natural for that to appear in the content, yeah. you know, and it made sense that skincare would appear in a bathroom show and all of that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but I feel like if you are trying to reverse engineer something, the audience is going to call BS. Yes. And I think that's the mistake a lot of people make. Yes. You know, the other thing that I'll say is there are two different businesses. While, while there's a beautiful marriage between content and commerce, and I think the future is shoppable programming, without a doubt, mm -hmm. I do. Um, I do think it's really important to, uh, to note that we have a specific set of partners on the, the skincare business, which is different than the content side. And we have the best in class people working on formulas and efficacious you know, products and first in class branding um, and marketing and so on and so forth, all through Haley's vision. But each decision needs to be made in, in a silo for what's best for that specific part of the business. Yeah. And then they all work together. It's awesome. Yeah. So Haley, got to ask, like, how are sales? Like, how's it been performing? <laughs> um, it's been doing very, very well, which I'm, I feel so lucky for that. And I feel really grateful just to maybe give a little bit of context. Um, we crossed the eight-figure revenue mark in the first six months of sales. And that was despite only being on sale for 11 days. But the reason we were on sale for only 11 days was because it kept selling out. And, you know, we were trying to figure out how to restock and... and wow. Keep that demand that planning. Uh, demand planning. <laughs> yeah, all the basics. Things you can only learn when it's happening. Yeah, no. <laughs> supply chain issues. Yeah, because you're, 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 you're making the product yourself. You're not you're not taking any shortcuts. Like you're mm -hmm. really going from. Mm -hmm. No, to Haley's credit, when we were in the early stages of this thing, we heard every sort of pitch about you could do a license or a hybrid license deal. It was ground up. So I I want to talk about this audience a little bit. So Jen, the audience, you're entering in this two way conversation. Is there anything that this audience asked for that surprised you? You're like, I ain't making that. That's like some wacky stuff. <laughs> to be honest, no. I mean, this is such a brand that is going to be so focused on the customer feedback because I'm making this brand for people. I want everyone to love it. I care so much about, I like am such a people pleaser and I care so much about what people think and I want everybody to just love it. And if I could make individual products for every yeah. single person on the planet, I swear I would. So uh. <laughs> um, there's nothing that's off the table. I would say the biggest thing that I've seen feedback on is, you know, I think people would like to see kind of this combination of skincare makeup hybrid. And that's something that feels very in my wheelhouse and very me because mm -hmm. I really enjoy skincare based makeup and you know that seems like something that will definitely be the next natural step for the cool. brand and what else is down the pipe so it sounds like you alluded to a new content series and product Can you tell us a little bit more of like what we could expect in 2023 and beyond i'm not going to try to pronounce that dish again um <laughs> but but yeah what's in my kitchen you did kill it i swear I, to god <laughs> i was up in the mirror last night just like <laughs> um so uh 
Yeah, I mean, what's in my kitchen is really fun. I mean, it's so cool breaking these new formats and seeing what works. Yeah, and and that's not a set. That is in my house. That's in our house. Oh wow! We're back in the house. Back in the back house. In the but house. there's something less intrusive. You're in the kitchen versus like the bathroom next to the bedroom. Um, <laughs> but it's really fun. We've shot a few episodes. We have a few more that we're shooting. We're going to release the first season. Yeah. We brought on a title sponsor that we're really excited to announce. That's perfectly integrated into it. Uh, that feels organic and natural. That's been that's an awesome product. Awesome. Um, so we're, we're working on that, and then we have a few other tricks up our sleeve. Uh, bringing it back to potentially some of those uh, streamers we talked about, right. and yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we love. And also with the YouTube stuff, I think that naturally we want to do more with other beauty creators, yeah. and we want to kind of really continue to dive into that beauty space as the brand evolves too. I, I do think we also kind of, we pivot as we see how things are changing within Road and what are the next products we're putting out. So that sometimes shifts what we decide to do with the content as well. But I think we've had a lot of conversations of partnering with other makeup artists and beauty creators and hairstylists. And I really want to be able to open up my platform to other people as well. She has one idea that she brought to me recently that's so good. All right. That's still like in the kernel, you know, oh, it's, but it's, in, I can't, like, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not baked enough, uh, but she does, it's, it's another format uh, that is really just, friend DA, it's, it's so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really good, so, but that's how it happens, we yeah. have these like brainstorm sessions with a team, and she'll be there with the whiteboard, and she'll be like, I got it, and then we have our whole, t you know, it, it's really cool, and it's been special, and we have a great group of people that are working really hard on this stuff, but <clears throat> there's a lot more cool stuff to come. All right, one, one last very serious question, so, um, Glazed donut, fingernails. <laughs> like, what, 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 what's next? Like, what are you predicting for? Uh, the next you know, I'm the type of fire? person where I'm always gonna live and die by glazed donut skin, glazed, glaze everything head to toe. That's something that I, I, I've always been saying when it comes to skincare and beauty. I like looking like a little glazed, glowy donut. And <laughs> I, the, the glazed donut nail thing was a happy accident, to okay. be honest. This was just something that me and um, the wonderful girl who does my nails, we kind of just came up with that. And then it just took off and it was such a pleasant surprise. And I, and I feel glad that everybody likes it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Congrats on all the success. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Haley and Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.